Welcome to Empowerment Word Church, where we empower people with the Word of God to live, fulfill, and be. Live a life that's pleasing to God. Fulfill the plan of God for your life and be witnesses and ambassadors in the earth for Christ. We are led by pastors Sean and Gwen Edwards. Visit us on the web at empowermentwordchurch.com. now in the name of Jesus God I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to stand here and share your word oh God I believe I'm anointed to teach and to preach your word God and I believe the people here are anointed to receive your word oh God I declare on today that your word shall fall on good ground and produce a harvest in the lives of the people today in Jesus name amen amen but praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, host minister. Appreciate y'all. Hey, listen, as I go here this morning, uh, I know for the last several weeks we've discussed how our society is trying to get us to conform to the culture's new standards. Specifically, one of the culture's greatest gifts, I believe, greatest goals is to try to change our, change your identity. And one of culture's greatest tests, I believe, is try to pull you away or pull us away from worshiping God. Now it's time to consider culture's greatest sin. I want to call it pride. And so if I wanted to put this on a title this morning as I was looking at this particular king uh, that's dealing with Daniel and those Hebrew boys, I want to just say to you this day as we close this out, stay humble. Somebody say stay humble. Stay humble. Put that in the text. Just stay humble. Just stay humble. If you don't get anything else, just stay humble. Position yourself to stay humble. Pride, I believe, is one of those words that can be synonymous with self-confidence and strength and character. And while there's nothing wrong with having this healthy sense of self, I believe to stay healthy, we got to stay humble. We got to stay humble. I want you that ringing in your spirit. Anytime we feel like we are better than another person or another group or people, uh, then pride inflates our egos. Uh, that attitude of a proud person says stuff like, uh, look at my social status. Look at my achievements. Look at my education. Look at my talents. Oh, look at my salary and my bank accounts. Look at my fancy house and, and look at my possessions. I'm talking about staying humble. Pride, I believe, is this gateway, uh, this gateway sin that offers a doorway to the enemy to just drop in and tell us, uh, tell us how great we are and tell us how, how we really don't need God. I, I'm talking about challenging the culture. Today, we're going to stay humble, amen? I'm talking about the enemy shows up and he wants to whisper in our ears stuff like, you know, religion, it, it, it's just a crutch for those weak people. It's a crutch. It, you're strong. You're better than that. You, you in control of your life. You are. They're, 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 these are all lies. These are all lies. They try to encourage us to really start questioning God, to start thinking he does not know what he's doing. Oh, my goodness. To get us in a position where we want to start questioning God and, and, and thinking that God don't know what he's doing. To start believing that we know more than God knows. I'm talking about staying humble because we're going to look at this individual today. I know we've looked at Daniel, and, and, and we saw Daniel, and then we saw the three Hebrew boys be delivered out of the fiery furnace. And even when I went over to six, we saw where Daniel was placed in the lion's den, but those lions lost their appetite, and Daniel was able to come out of the lion's den. He refused to worship. He refused to, to worship the, the, the idol of Nebuchadnezzar. But I wanted to look at Nebuchadnezzar today. 
I wanted to look at some things about him as we think about this stay humble. Pride is a major problem that usually creates a chain of reactions of major consequences, isn't it? I mean, this is why the issue of pride appears again and again and again in all the prophetic books. When I think about all the way from Isaiah all the way down to Malachi, the, 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 the prophetic books, the, the major and the minor prophets, and you, when you go look at all those, constantly trying to remind them to, to listen, you are in yourself. You in pride. And it leads us so, it takes us down this road. The issue, I believe, of human pride today and arrogance and, and self-sufficiency has never been as bold as it is today. I'm talking about challenging the culture. God is looking for some folks who are going to swim against the current and not always go with the flow. Uh, where, where are my current swimmers at this morning? Folks who swim against the current. And for those who've ever been in a swimming pool, who've ever been in the ocean, you can tell when you're trying to get out into the deep water, the currents keep beating up on you. Don't want you to progress. Don't want you to move any further. But the moment you get over that little wave and you get out there, it's real calm. And you go, ah, oh, this is not that bad after all. When I, when I think about that, but it's bold today. People think they can custom design uh, their DNA for their babies. I'm talking about today. People think they can change their genders and they scientifically can prevent death. I'm, I'm talking about today. We're told that if we generate enough money, uh, then we can con virtually control our whole life. We, we can control everything. The need for God is slowly kind of pulling away, being replaced by this reliance on science, about our devotion to the Internet. I mean, we lose it, man. We can't find our phones. We, out of, we, 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 we all messed up. I'm talking about this pursuit of personal happiness. King Nebuchadnezzar had some of these same attitudes. I'm talking about staying humble. He had some of these attitudes. He was full of pride and self-sufficiency. He exalted himself over a whole bunch of folks, including God. And that's when the issue started. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, church, if we're not careful, people of God, this culture will quickly cause us to forget who it was that allowed us to be successful in the first place. Everything that we've had and everything that we've accomplished is because of who God is. And I'm so thankful and so grateful that God has blessed us. God has blessed us. There's some people all over the world are struggling this morning. Struggling. We had the audacity this morning to get up in our homes and our places, man, comfortable. You know, and, and God has been good to us, but we can never forget it's God. He's the one that allows you the platform. He's the one that gave you the influence. You made it because of him. You've made it. I'm talking about staying humble. Nebuchadnezzar, he had to learn that God saw, is sovereign and that he will humble those who are, all, who are guilty of this sinful pride, even in the mightiest rulers. And we're going to see how was Nebuchadnezzar humbled, Pastor. I'm talking about staying humble this morning. As we challenge the culture, as all the trends happen in our world and all the changes around us are happening, I want to remind you to stay humble. As God elevates you and bless you and things are happening in your life for your family, I want to remind you to stay humble. Stay humble. Stay in a place where you're appreciative. Nebuchadnezzar's pride did not emerge until after he committed to really accepting Daniel's God. And his people, he, he witnessed all several miracles that Nebuchadnezzar did. Uh, he, he could not deny the power and the divinity of God. He couldn't deny it. Oh, my goodness. And so now let me go to Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to read a little bit something to you this morning. Just hang in there with me because I want you to get this and see this to so stay humble. I want you to stay humble because the reality is if we don't really uh, grasp some of the things that we see demonstrated in the text, Man, it's, it's, it's kind of insanity to not really humble ourselves. And so I'm going to read the first few, three verses so far in Daniel chapter 4. Here's what it says. Because I see here, I really see a Nebuchadnezzar. He's really, he made this, this proclamation in these first few verses because he started off really well. And it's interesting how we start off pretty good. But listen to what he said. 
King Nebuchadnezzar, to the nations and people of every language who live on all the earth, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs and how his mighty, how his mighty is wonders. And his, his kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. Oh, my God, he proclaimed what God had done for him in his life. And so he putting that out out front. But those who've been with us for the last several weeks, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's wishy-washy. He's kind of bipolar. One minute he's talking about the mighty is the Lord, the next minute throw him in the fiery furnace. One minute he's talking about, yeah, your God is the God, Daniel's God is the God. Listen, so throw him in the lion's den. Like, which one is it, Nebuchadnezzar? Which one is it? And so I see here he, he's made some witness. Have you ever thought about how destructive pride is in our lives? Have you ever thought about it? It, it? It's the root of every other sin. The worst sin isn't murder or adultery. It's pride. Why do I say that? Because pride declares, I want to be God. Are we going to see Nebuchadnezzar here in just a minute? I want to be God. I want to choose my own way. I just want to live my life the way I want to live it. This is my life. See, we got to be very careful when we declare that out of our mouths and we, we make these statements here. I just want to live my truth and do such and such. Got to be very careful when we make those declarations because somehow pride has kind of creeped in. This is my money. I made all of this happen. And, and you're going to see here in just a moment how Nebuchadnezzar begins to shift because his story reveals the kind of pride that only leads to insanity. Let me tell you something. This type of pride leads to insanity. And you're going to see this brother is about to lose his mind. Because this disease, this, this deranged thinking, his story reveals that. And I want to tell you that he can either, you can either choose humility or humiliation. You can initiate another God will initiate. Matter of fact, here's a thought I want to tell you. The first one I was thinking. You can choose to be humbled or humiliated. I, I want to let you know that now because I'm reminding you we need to stay humble. You can choose to be humbled or humiliated, but, but Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, he wanted to do something different because the reality is uh, you, we can choose to be humbled or humiliated because one of them you can initiate and the other God will initiate. See, you got something to do with the humble inside. But if you don't humble yourself, God has something to do with the humiliation side. There's some things that we've experienced in our life and you wonder, Lord, why did you allow me to go through that? Sometimes you got to sit yourself down at that dining room table and ask yourself, Lord, what did I do? Where was I? I missed it on something. No, you were walking in pride. Couldn't nobody tell you nothing. You had all the answers. God has blessed you, got you in that nice community. You got multiple cars. You got all this stuff happening, and you don't want to give God some praise. How dare us? See, I want to remind us to stay humble. I want to remind us to stay humbled. Because, in fact, God warned Nebuchadnezzar about this. He, he identified three areas. Somebody say three areas. He really did. He, he identified some areas, I believe, where pride often flourishes, and it chokes out humility, and it chokes out this healthy fear of God. When you hear the term fear sometime in the Bible, it's just talking about reverence in God. We're not talking about walking down the street and afraid that we're going to get struck by lightning. No, reverence in God, honoring God. Do we honor God? Do we reverence God? Because the first area I want to tell you is prosperity and contentment. This is the sense of complacency that becomes our entitlement and enjoy our life and do whatever we want to do. It's interesting how God has blessed us and then we want to have this sense of entitlement. Because verse, uh, verse 4 said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I was at home in my palace. Here we go, contented and prosperous, the brother said. Oh, that's one of those areas, man. That's the first area that I want to tell you that pride can show up. This is a picture of self-sufficiency and pride. Because when times are good, we may not think about God as much. See, when your family is straight, when your bills are paid, you got a little extra money in your account, you got plenty of food in your house. You understand what I'm saying? You got a place to sleep. You're looking good. It seems like we don't call on God that much. Oh, I'm going to keep it real this morning because he said stay humble. 
We, we might not think we need God, but when times get hard, where do we turn? I'm talking about getting real hard. When, when circumstances are beyond your control, where do we turn? I'm talking about when something happened like a sickness attacks the family and it baffles the doctors and they can't even figure out what's going on with your body. Where do we turn? I'm talking about those challenging moments. I'm, I'm talking about savings accounts and retirement accounts and 401s and 501c or 401 accounts, right? All of them just go empty overnight. Where do we turn? I'm talking about you. everything is going smooth and all of a sudden you are shocked or given some divorce papers. Where do we turn? I, I, I'm talking about it's in those moments we go running to God in those moments. We go running to God. If we want to overcome this pride in our lives, then we got to turn from this self-sufficiency. And we got to go back to God depending. Here's a thought I want to tell you from an insanity standpoint. It's insanity to be self-sufficient instead of God-dependent. It's, it's, it's insanity to be self-sufficient instead of God-dependent. It, it, it's insanity to believe that everything that you've accomplished, everything that you've become, and everything that you have, it, it's, it's on you. It's because of you and your efforts. How, pastor, do I express my dependency on God? I'm so glad you asked. I just want to tell you very simple, just begin with prayer. That's how you show your dependency on God. When God comes through for you, who is the first person you think? Do you run into your children's room, baby, that this is what the Lord did? I got that. But before your feet hit the ground, you ought to tell them, thank you, Lord. When you see God do something miraculously for your life, you ought to position yourself and give him praise and thank the Lord. You've been driving that rundown car, and now you got a brand new car. They said you didn't your credit score one together, but now you riding all prosperous and you never gave God the glory. Oh my goodness, it, it, to be, it's insanity to be self-sufficient instead of God dependent. It really is. I want to remind you though, but how do you show your dependence? I said, let's begin to pray. Y'all remember 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 when it says, uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. And then I'm going to forgive their sin. Then he says, I'm going to heal their land. Maybe the reason a lot of healing hmm, is not taking place because we're not praying. I'm going to leave that alone. Stay humble. Stay humble. My reason for, I was thinking about my reason myself for having a strong relationship with Lord today is because I know who I am and who I was without God. Do, do you remember how you used to be? Do you remember? Do you know yourself? You know yourself, and without God, you are a hot mess. Come on, let's keep it real. I can't make it without God. I need to depend on God for everything. And don't just say it out of your mouth. Have a heart for God. I'm talking about staying humble. The second area of this attitude toward getting uh, giving credit, ground prayerfully, I can get through this. This is the second area. The second area where pride undermines our spiritual growth is this, is this attitude toward giving and getting credit. Do we take credit for what we have and enjoy in our lives? Do you take all the credit or do we give thanks? I just mentioned that. Do we give thanks, man? King Nebuchadnezzar discovered his answer through this powerful, this brother had a disturbing dream. And so this is the second dream in the text. He has a strange dream. I'm talking about it's disturbing. You ever had one of them dreams that you wake up on the side of the bed and, man, you're shaking your head and you're sweating and scratching and going, whoo, that, 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 that right there really, that was a little uncomfortable. Let me tell you something. God will speak to you in your dreams. God will try to get his attention to, listen, there's something going on. God, listen, God is an all-wise God. He's a God that sees ahead and he provides. But not only does he see ahead and provide, he's a God that sees ahead and he warns. And if God, if you're so busy, baby, God will speak to you in your sleep. Or he'll give you a dream that is so disturbing. Oh, my God, he gave me one. I'm not going to testify now. I might say it on the, on, the, on the tail end of the message. But he gave me a dream that was so disturbing in 2004. But it was a warning. It was to prevent me from, from, from seeing death 
too early and premature. Somebody, somebody, somebody going to get this. So when I think about Nebuchadnezzar, in his dream, he saw this magnificent tree whose lush branches and provided fruit and shade and cover for many people and even animals. But a heavenly messenger called out and came down and said, listen, cut down that tree in its various parts. None of his advisors, none of the magicians could interpret his dream. Only Daniel, they had to bring Daniel in again, somebody say again, to interpret his dreams. Matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar was really hoping that the tree in this particular dream was his enemies. But uh, Daniel had to bring something clear to him. Go with me. I'm going to drop all the way down to verse 22 through 25. 22 says this. This is what Daniel tell him. Your majesty, you the tree. <laughs> Whatever you was thinking about, you are the tree. So if you get a chance, go back and read these whole 37 verses. He said, you are the tree. You, you become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky. And your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. Verse 23, your majesty saw a holy one, a messenger coming down from heaven saying, cut down the tree and destroy it. Watch this. Leave the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew in heaven. Let him live with wild animals until seven times pass for him. This is the interpretation. Your majesty, this is the decree most high has issued against my lord the king. This is what he tell him. You're going to be driven away from people, and you're going to live with wild animals. Oh, my God. You're going to eat grass like an ox, and you're going to be drenched with dew of heaven. Seven times will you pass by until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign. That brother is going to be out in the jungle for seven years. This was in the dream. This is what Daniel was trying to interpret to him. Nebuchadnezzar was clearly a legend in his own right. He, he praised himself quite a bit, but he failed to realize that everything came from God. Even the folks who were in the world, you got to understand something. Everything that you had, listen, God allowed you to get it. It came from God. He failed to realize that it was God who equipped him to be a king. It was God who allowed him to oversee all his achievements that he claimed to be his. Here is another insanity thing. It's insanity to give ourselves credit instead of thanking God. Oh, it's insanity. To give yourself all the credit. Oh, you always well, you want somebody to pat you on the back. It's time for the believers to grow up. Stay humbled. I know I, the reality is we, we got to get out of this. I, I, I got to get some credit around here so we can do what, what can we do, Pastor, to avoid the fate that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was pushed out, lost his power, his, his, his kingdom, right? He, he was thrown out and uh, his brother went crazy, lost his mind, the range mindset, just lost. You know somebody like that? One moment they was on top of their game, and all of a sudden they just lost their mind. So when I think about this here, how can we avoid this? We got to develop an attitude of gratitude. Somebody say gratitude. We got to worship. We got to give God thanks, and we got to praise God. Because why? It counteracts the thoughts and the words that the enemy will try to tell you. You know, enemy show you know you're looking good, right? You look better than all them, right? You, you, know, you know you're better than them folks. We got to be very careful if God bless us. If you, if you, listen, you can go and eat wherever you want to eat. No, we got so high and mighty, you know, if we're not going to eat our lamb and our T-bone steak at our very fancy restaurants. But you need to continue to listen. Don't look down on people. If you feel like you want to have your good old fish sandwich and it just so happens they sell those fish sandwiches in a side of town that you might not frequently always go to, it's okay to go through there and get your fish sandwich. God has been good to you. I know you're going to pull up in your fancy car and you got all this nice stuff going on, but it's okay. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm better than that. I don't go on 3rd Avenue no more. I don't go over there. I, God has delivered me. You know, uh, I'm, I'm greater than them now. We got to be careful with that. I know you can go to your fancy restaurants, but when you show up in certain places, you don't need to despise and look down on folks. Nebuchadnezzar used to do that. That brother was cruel. That brother was cruel, man. There was a guy back in the day who tried to demonstrate and try to bring back some of the Nebuchadnezzar stuff. Babylon is really in northern Iraq. Saddam Hussein wanted to position himself like Nebuchadnezzar. He was mean and hard and cruel on people. And we all know what happened to Saddam. 
I don't wish death on anybody, but the reality is when we, when we constantly go against God and say, I want to be God, I want to be better than him. I am who I am because of who I am. The devil is a lie. We are and you are who you are because of who God says you are. That's who he says. This final area, I, I, you know, I was looking here that the final area where we must uproot pride in our lives, we got to uproot it. It basically is in perspective, out of the perspective. We, we got to stop thinking that we know best. And we got to acknowledge that heaven rules, man. We see this play out in the last part of this dream. Verse 26, as Daniel explained, he says this. In verse 26, I read it says, the command to, he said, leave the stump of the tree. Watch this. Leave the stump of the tree with its roots. It means that your kingdom will be restored to you. But, but, but what, what, what are the requirements, Lord, that... Until you acknowledge that heaven rules. Because let me tell y'all something. God always shows us a way back. Oh, thank you, Lord. Sometimes we can get so far out on the road and so far out left. See, there's a lot of folks right now, they out of fellowship with God. Heard a preacher talked about, you know, a lot of times we, we take it all this time. I'm praying, Pastor. I need to hear from the Lord. Let me ask you a question. What's taking you so long to hear from God? If you're walking with God, you've been praying for six months, nine months, for over a year. Listen, it shouldn't take that long. You should have a relationship when God starts talking, you listening. The, the reality is we take all this time and we say, but the reality, we, we got to get in a place where we hear from God. He says, I'm going to restore your kingdom, but you got to acknowledge that heaven rules. God, God always has a way back. God is always willing to produce what? New growth, I believe from the stumps in our lives. See, every one of us used to have stumps. Matter of fact, we got stumps right now. But see, the grace and the mercy of God said, I'm going to cut the tree down. I'm going to make them start from scratch. That's what happened to a lot of us. We've had all this stuff, but somehow we might have got in pride and all of a sudden everything is gone. But there's still, uh, there's still a little stump left. And God said, listen, I, I, I want to do something with that stump in your life because it has potential. God has gifted you with some things. That's your stump. There, there, there was never God's intent for the stump to stay out in the, just stay out there, right? No. Mm -mm. God does some things. It's insanity. Here's another insanity. It's, an, it's insanity to believe, to think I know best instead of acknowledging that heaven's rules. Yeah, it's insanity to let you know you, you know best. Watch this. It's insanity to think that. Here's verse 27 through 30. I'm, I'm going to ride on this on out. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Listen, this is what Daniel said. I hope, I hope you accept this advice. He says, renounce your sin. Now, this is what, this is the instruction. See, when a man or woman of God come to you and somebody say something to you that, that, that they say, that, well, it's coming from the Lord. I, this is on my heart. You got to judge it. But listen what Daniel was trying to get to the king. He said, listen, renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed, Nebuchadnezzar. He said, maybe that your prosperity will continue. The, the brother just said, your prosperity just might continue for you. If you just do this, but no, pride. Oh, no, I'm too good for that. No, I'm too good for that. Watch this. All this happened. Verse 28, here we go. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking, the Lord gave this brother 12 additional months to repent. See, you, you, we can't be playing with the mercy and the grace of God. He came to him 12, a, year before, a year earlier. If you do these things, but guess what? The brother did not respond. Silence, no response. No response. Then the text says, one day he was walking on his roof in verse 29 of the royal palace. Listen what this old arrogant, prideful man said out of his mouth. It's not the great Babylon I have built. Watch this. I want you to see the, the pronoun I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power for the glory of my majesty. Oh, my goodness. Look what I've built, my beautiful home, my beautiful yard, my four cars, all my clothes, all my leather furniture, all my bank accounts, all my stuff, 
Baby, this is all our stuff. Stay humble. You need to stay humble. I know you live over there in the gated community. You better stay humble. You better wave at them folks who live in trailers, amen? Absolutely, all of us trailers, mobile homes, projects. Listen, we, Lady Gwen and I came from the hood hood, and we know where God brought us from. And so, so we, we stay in this place, stay humble. The grace of God is not to be taken for granted, but understood and appreciated. It's a gift to receive. God gave his brother 12 months to change his heart. It's a dangerous place to be in a place where we start applauding ourselves. That brother said, my stuff. Brother, let me tell you something. Y'all ever seen that TikTok video, that video where that girl, that girl, she danced. It's about you about to lose your job. Well, listen, this brother, this brother here about to lose his mind. You about to lose your mind. You about to lose your job, Nebuchadnezzar. Absolutely, because pride will cause you to lose your job. Pride will cause you to lose everything that God gave you. Pride. When you operating in pride, you ought to just look at that person. You about to lose your job. You about to lose your mind. Because you think you've done everything yourself, and you get the credit for everything. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm rolling on now. Verse 31 to 33 says, even as the words, watch this. Soon he said that the words, before the words, as the words was coming out of his mouth, the Bible said a voice came from heaven. Oh, my God. Can you imagine being in your house and a voice coming? And you, ain't nobody in here but me. Ain't nobody in here but me. A voice came from heaven. This is what it decreed. Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken away from you. Y'all remember the dream came to Daniel a year ago, came to him. Daniel told him, he said, you're going to be driven away from the people. And you're going to live with wild animals. You're going to eat grass. Seven times you're going to pass by until. Verse 33, watch the text there because the brother didn't ever respond. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. Oh, my God. He was driven away from people. He ate grass like an ox. His body was drenched with dew. In a dew of heaven until he grew like the feathers of the brother had was like eagle's feathers, and his nails were like the claws of a bird. How you go from being a king to looking like a crazy cat? I'm talking about. I know he hadn't bathed in seven years. Living, his mind is gone. But God will restore, and God can restore. I'm riding this on out now. But Nebuchadnezzar, he chose a life, I believe, he wouldn't live by his own rules. He ignored what God was telling him. We got to be very careful, precious people, when we ignore the warnings of God. God been talking. God is speaking. God has God sent a little baby, a child, to say something to you. Mama, mama, you need to stop eating like that. Girl, get on out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just a baby. And years down the road, we, we talking about we dealing with diabetes. And we, we talking about all this stuff that we're dealing with, and God has been speaking all along. Oh, we got to pay attention. I know it's hard. Listen, stay humble. Stay humble. I, 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 I'm, I'm giving you what I'm hearing God say to me. Stay humble. So as I finish this here, and I see God as a restore, the prophecy was fulfilled in this text. But we have to pay a serious price when we ignore the warnings of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar paid a serious price, y'all. We got to stay humble. But where do we go from here, Pastor? Well, fortunately, Nebuchadnezzar eventually came to his senses. I'm almost done. And he returned to God in full humanity. There were a few verses. I'm going to give you these last few things. The Bible says, verse 34, at the end of time, Nebuchadnezzar, he raised his eyes. Listen to what he did. He raised his eyes and toward heaven. The Bible says that his sanity was restored. Then he praised the Most High and he honored and glorified him. And his dominion is an eternal dominion. Verse 35, all the people of the earth, they it was guarded as nothing. And, and thus he pleased with the power. But I want to get to this part. Verse 36, at the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me. God is a restorer. Then in verse 37, I have a he prayed. Watch this. Now, here is the, the final thing. This, if you want to be restored, Pastor, how do I get restored? I want my sanity back. I lost my joy. I lost my peace. I don't feel like I'm connected any longer. I can't hear from God. God is talking, and I can't hear a thing. Do you want to know how that you can be restored? You can get your sanity back. 
Bible says in verse 37, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he, he prays and exalts and glory the king of heaven because everything that he does is right and all that he does, his ways are just and those who walk in pride is able to humble. Then where am I going with that? You want your insanity restored in the midst of this crazy culture? You want it all back? Well, the first thing you want to give and want to do, here's a thought. You got to exalt the king of heaven. Oh, my God. In other words, give God some glory. Give God some praise for everything that he's done in your life. Give him some praise. Give God some glory. It was God who brought you out. It was God who kept you when nobody else would kept you. It was God who stood there with you when everybody else walked out on you. Give God some praise. We got to exalt the king. You see in the text where he said he exalted him. How do I get back, Pastor? How do we restore? Here's another thing. I got to acknowledge that God does everything right and all his ways are just. It's in the text. I'm just getting it out the Bible. I ain't making this up. It's in the Bible. That's what he did in verse 37. That's what he did. We got to accept the authority of God's word. In other words, don't second guess the Lord. Don't try to figure everything out because if you can figure it out, why are you calling on the name of the Lord? Just relax. Don't try to change the Bible to fit what you want it to do. See, you got to be very careful in this culture. They want us to change the Bible to fit our lifestyles. Oh, I'm calling it out. You got to stay humble. Got to stay humble. Got to stay humble. I want to do what I want to do. No, that's not humility. I want to live my life the way I want to live my life, Pastor. That's not humility. Can't nobody tell me what to do, Pastor. That's not humility. This is my money, Pastor. No, that's not humility. Oh, that's not humility. You can choose to be humble or you can be humiliated. I'd rather be humble. How do I get restored, Pastor? This is the last part when he says, uh, and those who walk in pride, he's able to humble. Here's the thought. Just walk in humility. Humble yourself. Stay humble. Walk in humility. But here's the thought. I, I, I'm not talking about putting yourself down all the time or being somebody's doormat. Just because you're a Christian and you're a believer, you ain't nobody doormat. You ain't nobody step on you. Listen, you, you're a warrior in the spirit. Hallelujah. You're a warrior in the spirit. Just because we Christians, we don't let folk just run over us and treat us a certain. No, we're, I'm not talking about that. Oh, the folks, oh, don't, don't, don't mind me. I'm just a little squirrel in the jungle in this earth here. Some people think that is so spiritual. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just passing by. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I'm coming through that, y'all. Don't, don't mind me. We act like that's real spiritual by you saying that. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking yourself less. Humility is thinking about yourself less. Humility is not thinking, listen to what I'm going, it's not thinking less of yourself demeaning you. It's just thinking about yourself less. It's not about you. Most parents, when you're at home and you got to prepare a meal, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about the mouths you got to feed. When you go off to work and you're earning money, you're not thinking about where you're going to sleep. You're thinking about where your children and your family has a place to lay their head. Thinking less about you. I had this thing at my home. Listen, my children today will tell you right out the gate, Daddy's not going to eat until all of us eat first. See, I knew some of us grew up when we grew up, you know, you put the table, put the food on the plate and the man of the house come and eat because he'd work. That was the old school way. I remember that. You make sure the man of the house get his plate first. But God began to talk to me years ago about sacrifice, about putting others before me, putting my family first. God blessed me with a family, didn't he? God blessed me with a wife, didn't he? I got a, hey man, yes. Hey man. Babies of praise God. Hallelujah. 
Don't let no baby out praise you. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we can be courageous and have a contrite heart at the same time. Because walking in humility is an attitude. Where are you going, Pastor? James 4 and 10 says, uh, humble yourself before the Lord. And watch this. He'll lift you up. <laughs> He'll lift you up. You actually grow closer with the Lord when we're less focused on ourselves. And I'm done. Listen. Standing strong in a pride-inflated culture that we live in now begins face down. See, if you want to make it through this cultural indoor, you got to be face down. You got to humble yourself before the Lord. See, we got to learn something about neology rather than theology. When you got an issue and experience, you ought to find yourself on your knees. See, there's a lot of things can be worked out on your knees. That there's a lot of things that God can, can do when you're on your knees. There's a position of you posturing yourself that, Lord, I, I just want to hear from you and I just want to be right, God. Stay humble. And the Lord will meet you right where you are. Stay humble. Stay humble. Come on, let's bless God right there, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Challenging the culture. So for all you guys that are here, that are watching online, if you've never had an opportunity to receive Christ, the culture would tell you you don't need God. The culture would tell you you got time to get that fixed. The culture would tell you get yourself together first before you go doing that God thing. All of those are not true. Who told you you had enough time? Every day is a gift. Who told you you can get yourself together? No. Come as you are. And watch God clean you up. So all heads are bowed to those Christian believers that are here praying in the Spirit, praying with your language. Just repeat after me for those who want to receive Christ. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he died on the cross for me. And God, you raised him from the dead so I can be right with you. I want to be right with you, God. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you today, God, for saving me. If you said that prayer, listen, you're saved just like this. You transitioned, you went from darkness to light just like this. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless God right there, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for what he's done. Thank God for his word. Come on and stand to your feet. I don't want to keep you much. Thank you for watching today. We hope this message has been a blessing to you. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram at Empowerment Word Church. You can also view this and other messages from Empowerment Word Church on Facebook and YouTube. If you are blessed by this message and would like to support the ministry, simply go to empowermentwordchurch.com and select the Give tab at the top of the page. Remember to live, fulfill, and be. And we'll see you next time.